One last uh, note here, this presentation and the corresponding slides are copyrighted by Robson Forensic Inc. <clears throat> and may not be recorded, copied, distributed, or otherwise used without authorization. Uh, with that being said, a lot of times these recordings become available after the fact. Uh, so please check back again to our website, robsonforensic.com slash webinars, and you can access uh, recordings for many of our previous webinars uh, that you can watch at your leisure. All right, on to today's program. Uh, I'd like to introduce everyone to our ceramic scientist, James Derby, who will be presenting the webinar today. Uh, James, I think everybody's all set with hearing me talk. So if you're ready to go, uh, the floor is I yours, am. sir. Thank you, Jeremy. So I'm James Derby. I'm a glass scientist uh, and a failure analysis expert for Robson Forensic. Today, we're going to talk about different classes of materials, including ceramics, types of glass and tempered glass that are included in that uh, ceramics uh, arena. The forensic science of fractography as applied to um, the tempered glass in a lot of different product lines. Uh, fractography specifically of shower glass doors and concluding comments. I come from industry. I have 25 years of experience in failure analysis, material consulting and product development. I apply that to a wide range of ceramic and polymer materials. You might ask why polymers? Polymers, 95% uh, of all failures in polymers occur due to brittle fracture. So the rules that govern brittle fracture of glass are very appropriate for the study of polymer materials. Um, I've been involved with various industries, including aerospace and petrochemical. Um, the forensics uh, specialties that I uh, follow our failure analysis, fractography, manufacturing defects as they relate to fracture, and material analysis. Next slide, please. So within the classes of materials, the three primary ones that people talk about are the metals, the ceramics, and polymers. But we also have a mix of those different kinds of materials within composites. So within specific um, area of uh, ceramics, Ceramics include oxides. These are gonna be like silicon dioxide, uh, aluminum uh, oxide, carbides, silicon carbide, tungsten carbide, glass materials, porcelain materials, such as uh, plumbing fixtures uh, that uh, everybody has in their home, and generally brittle materials. Next slide, please. Within the classes of glass materials, we have window glass, simple soda lime silicate glass, which has a composition of approximately 72% SiO2, 13% uh, sodium, and about 12% calcium. Uh, that is the one of the lowest uh, melting temperature compositions. It allows for the manufacturing of uh, a relatively low cost window glass. It's fairly easily broken but it has minimal distortion uh, associated with it. If that window glass is passed through a tempering furnace, it produces something called safety glass or tempered glass. The glass uh, cost is moderate. Uh, it has higher strength, four times the strength of window glass. It is impact resistant. Some visual distortion may be expected. Low expansion borosilicate glass, 13% uh, uh, boron oxide added to the glass elevates the melting temperature, but what it does is reduces the thermal expansion coefficient. So this is a type of glass which is put into um, uh, products that constantly see large uh, temperature variations. Um, it can be uh, have boiling water in it and then you can put it into the refrigerator. This, uh, the original composition uh, was known as Pyrex, uh, patented by the Corning Glassworks. And then we have laminate, laminated glass, uh, higher cost, uh, and it's used in vehicle windshields. Next, please. So tempered glass failure investigations. Why are we here? Uh, we want to speak directly to our clients when looking at cases where failures of glass products are likely to cause injury. We have an entire list of different glass products here. Tabletops, fracture, and sometimes explode. 
last table class. 7,000 cases of injuries just in the last couple of years have been from exploding tabletops. Coffee pots, the bottom will fall out. Unexpectedly, people get scalded with boiling hot water. Uh, merchandise display cases, such as jewelry cases, sometimes they explode. And the problem here is you've got customers, uh, you've got uh, employees looking down through the glass. Sometimes the explosion is so loud, people lose their hearing. And specifically shower doors. Uh, everybody has a, a bathtub or a shower, a uh, huge number of shower door um, installations in the US. And there were 2,300 cases of injuries uh, involving glass shower doors. Uh, we also see failure in entry doors, um, mixing bowls, oven doors, uh, walls and partitions, and even automotive side windows. Next, Next slide, please. Annealed versus tempered glass. What does it mean to have a glass which is annealed? It means taking the glass to a temperature of about 850 degrees Fahrenheit and very slowly cooling it so that the internal part of the glass, it cools at exactly the same rate as the external part, that glass then does not have residual stress in it. I used to do work for the government facility at Savannah River, which manufactured high iron borosilicate glass to encapsulate uh, radioactive waste materials. And I uh, melted that material, I conducted certain uh, uh, high temperature properties of that material. And I cooled it uh, as, as rapidly as the furnace would go. When I took it out, placed it on a table, that glass would break just by itself. It didn't even need to have an uh, extra force put on it. It was so full of internal stress, uh, it wasn't annealed. And I learned very early on, you have to anneal glass. Otherwise, the glass has a stress, the stress will weaken it. When window glass breaks, uh, it does not explode. Normally window glass is well annealed, uh, and, uh, uh, but we do see that it, if it does break, it breaks into large, uh, dangerous shards. In 1977, um, the use of tempered glass was, became a requirement in shower glass doors. Uh, simply because of the incidences of very large, sharp shards. Safety glass, tempered glass, does not produce those large shards. When safety glass fractures, uh, it uh, produces half-inch size uh, glass shards. Now, people still get cuts, but the cuts are much more minor than they would be with the large shards coming from uh, just the window glass itself. Tempered glass is full of stress, but it does have some impact resistance. And when tempered glass breaks, it explodes into small shards. And that explosion uh, is accompanied by a very loud noise. Next slide, please. Tempered glass is full of stress, as I mentioned. When tempered glass breaks, potential energy that was stored in there because of the, uh, the cooling process and this cooling or tempering process has the surface of the glass at a temperature of 425 degrees, but the inside of the glass is only 147. So this is like taking a piece of shrink wrap and using it around the rest of the glass. It does elevate the strength of the glass, but it produces a lot of potential energy in the glass, which if the tempered glass breaks, that potential energy converts to kinetic energy, causing the glass to shatter in an explosive manner. Uh, explosion of tempered glass produces a loud noise. Next slide, please. Tempered glass failures, some of the hazards that are associated with it. Projectile injuries. Uh, people who uh, are near the glass uh, suffer from injuries to their face and their eyes, sometimes their arms. Um, shards are exploded outward and with considerable force. Debris injuries, particularly in shower door failures, where individuals have to step out of the shower. The bottom of the shower is covered with uh, uh, glass shards, and even the bottom of uh, the floor of the bathroom is covered 
And so there are a lot of foot uh, uh, injuries in, involved uh, in these uh, shower door incidences. Uh, exposure to guarded hazards. There are new uh, architectural style uh, uh, glass that is used in sidewalls and uh, handrails within uh, malls and uh, other facilities. Um, if this uh, uh, glass uh, uh, explodes, uh, people potentially can fall off the stairs and fall great distances. And hearing damage, uh, inner ear damage uh, occurs quite often uh, from the uh, being exposed to the tempered glass failure. Next slide. Fractography. Fractography is the science of analyzing how a failure occurred. Um, it's typically fractured glass pieces, they need to be preserved so that these fracture surfaces can be analyzed under the stereo microscope and using a scanning electron microscope. And there are very specific areas that are being looked for uh, during fractography. Next slide, please. Fractographic analysis is conducted per ASTM and NIST standards. Those standards are ASTM C1322 and National Institute of Standards and Technology's special publication SP960-60. These um, uh, standards uh, came as a result of uh, pioneering work by, from Dr. Frechette at the New York State College of Ceramics. I was a student of Dr. Frechette's in fractography. And Dr. Frechette uh, was the first to analyze and substantiate that cracks occurred from failure origin sites and they produced some very unique type of uh, surface um, uh, features. Next slide, please. So within fractography, on the right-hand side, this is an image that shows how a failure origin site can then lead to the production of a crack uh, propagating out from the failure origin site couple things to keep in mind about cracks in glass. It's a two-step process. Uh, the crack uh, nucleation has to be there first, followed by crack propagation, which uh, occurs in response to internal stress or external stress, which is produ producing a, an impact or bending moment on the glass. Cracks follow the path of least resistance. And a crack is a material's way of reducing stress and the failure origin sites exhibit the following. When the crack first begins, it produces this mirror area that you can see in the schematic on the right-hand side. As it is accelerating, it produces the mist. And once it gets to full crack velocity or terminal velocity within the material, it's producing the hackle regions. And hackle regions are unique because they point directly back to the failure origin site. If you can find one of these type of failure origin sites within the piece of glass that has failed, that is uh, unique. There are not multiple sites that says, this is how the failure occurred. And it started from this particular area, the failure origin site. Next slide, please. Crack propagation, uh, fracture surfaces observed at high magnification using stereo microscope and a scanning electron microscope. Uh, crack uh, starts with zero velocity, and as I stated in the previous uh, slide, the mirror area is produced during the onset of propagation. The mist area is created, created as the crack accelerates, and the hackle lines are produced when the crack nears terminal velocity. Hackle lines point back to the failure origin site. ASTM mentions uh, the importance of identifying this uh, failure origin site. NIST does as well, and the courts are accepting this as um, absolute uh, legal basis for saying, yes, we know that that's how the failure occurred. Next slide, please. So investigative steps to determine the cause of failure. Um, some clues that come from the manufacturing, whole fabrication. 
holes always have to be put into glass before the tempering process. And in some instances, installers att attempt to increase the size of a hole in a piece of tempered glass. This is producing uh, uh, rough areas around the, uh, um, uh, the hole ID. And each of those uh, roughened areas uh, can act as crack nucleation sites. The tempering must follow ASTM C1048-18. Uh, evidence inspection, susceptible to damage at the edges. Uh, and uh, when uh, glass door is being inspected, you're inspecting for chips and cracks. The size of the glass shards for um, failed uh, uh, tempered glass, uh, the shards should be consistent. Uh, each of the shards should be approximately one half of an inch. That shows that the glass uh, was exposed to uniform tempering. If we have inconsistent uh, sizes in the shards, then it was non-uniform tempering. And we have differences in the stress state of the material, which can lead to fracture. Next slide, please. So we're gonna begin the discussion on the forensics of fractured glass shower doors. As you can see in this shower door, Glass is covering the, uh, the floor of the shower. Also, some of the glass has stayed together even though it is cracked. Uh, and uh, all it takes is just taking uh, that glass, pushing it a little bit and it'll fall to the floor. This crack that you, the, the cracked glass, which is still standing, you can take in your hand and you can easily break that apart. Next slide, please. So what happens when the glass shower door fractures? Um, Incident descriptions. Uh, when my teenage son closed the door to take a shower, the glass door exploded into tiny shards. Another incident description. I was awakened in the middle of the night by a loud bang. When I walked into the, the bathroom, uh, the lights were not on, it was in the dark. I cut my feet on glass shards that covered the bathroom floor when the shower door exploded. Recalls have been issued by many shower uh, glass door manufacturers, and there's a website there, uh, www.saferproducts.gov. Next slide, please. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission has issued a safety alert in the year 2018, stating that between the years of 2012 and 2016, there were an estimated 2,300 U.S. emergency room visits associated with shattering glass shower doors. Many, many people have observed uh, fractured uh, shower doors, but there was no injury involved. They had just simply replaced the door. That's different. In this case, 2,300 people were injured. Over 400 specific reports are listed on the uh, Consumer Product Safety Commission website. Next slide, please. So the use of glass shower doors, glass shower doors were previously made using window glass. As we can see in the photo on the right-hand side, this is not tempered glass. Uh, and when it uh, fractures, it produces extremely sharp shards, which are very dangerous. Uh, the change uh, was done as a result of severe injuries and death that had occurred using just uh, window glass shower doors. Next slide, please. Tempered glass shower doors are made, uh, they're safety glass. Um, these uh, shower doors are made from tempered glass. Safety glass is passed through a tempering furnace. Tempering makes safety glass four times stronger. Tempered glass fractures into tiny pieces. And the tempered glass is uh, susceptible to edge damage. Next slide, please. So within um, shower door assemblies, there are framed shower doors and there are frameless shower doors. The framed shower doors use tempered glass. It's a low cost uh, door and they use thinner glass. Uh, they're easy to install. Many uh, homeowners, do-it-yourselfers install uh, framed shower doors. It's got a standard appearance, and typically the glass is supported using an aluminum frame. Many people are opting now for a more expensive version, the frameless shower doors. 
Also, it uses uh, tempered glass, but the tempered glass is thicker. Uh, there's a higher cost associated with framer, uh, the frameless shower doors. Uh, it's also a labor intensive installation. So uh, these type of doors tend to be installed by professional uh, installers. It's a more beautiful appearance. And the thicker glass that is used in the shower doors may not even need a support frame. Next slide, please. So when a piece of uh, uh, glass door, uh, it, when it shatters, it produces about 5,000 glass shards. And those glass shards fly everywhere. Next slide, please. What causes shower doors to fracture? Installation errors. Uh, if uh, the installers are not careful and they're dragging the sliding door uh, across the floor, or as they're putting it into the shower, it bumps against the uh, uh, the tub. Uh, installation or errors produce nucleation sites. You have to be very careful. The shower doors should remain uh, protected until the last step in the installation, uh, just to stay away from producing edge chips and edge damage. Sometimes there's a, the hardware is loose uh, and uh, the rollers and the brackets and the hinges allow the door to drop. Uh, repetitive impact occurs as the sliding door is open and closed. Uh, there may be glass imperfections, uh, gas bubbles, uh, nickel sulfide imperfections uh, can appear within the glass. And um, the glass is known to suffer from slow crack growth phenomena. That is repeated expo exposures to uh, water vapor steam during the shower uh, actually changes the uh, SiO2 structure and makes it more brittle. Next slide, please. So some of the unique conditions for the glass in the shower doors. Showers are used every day, probably multiple times every day. Showers expose, expose the glass to water vapor. Water vapor is known to cause slow crack growth. Glass is exposed to thermal stress cycles every shower. Uh, the shower might be 120 degrees. I uh, turn off the water, the temperature of the door drops to 70. Next shower gets back up to the higher temperature. Uh, this glass is uh, high thermal expansion uh, glass and these uh, thermal cycles produce thermal stress within the material. Next slide. So high magnification uh, observations. We're looking for failure origin sites that yield specific information about the cause. So if the failure origin site is located at the outer edge of the glass door, failure possibly is caused by an edge chip from installation. If the failure origin is located near the top roller, Failure quite uh, probably is due to stress at the whole support. Uh, if the failure origin is located away from the edge within the interior of the glass, failure um, probably due to internal flaws such as a gas bubble. Next slide. So we have walked through the different classes of materials and ceramics the different types of glass, tempered glass, uh, the forensic science of fractography and how fractography is applied to the failure analysis of showered glass doors. When uh, an attorney calls me about a glass door case, the first questions that I ask are number one, what kind of door was it? Number two, how long since the door has been installed? And three, uh, have the fracture pieces been saved? So if there is a, a case uh, that comes your way that um, you have the option of being able to say, yes, let's keep the, the glass shards. That's very important because that allows us to look for installation issues as the cause of failure or uh, abuse, uh, or we can even look for material defects. 
if the glass has been thrown away, we still have some information, especially if uh, photos have been taken of the uh, glass uh, uh, pieces and uh, information about how much of the area was covered by the, uh, the fractured uh, shower door. And I believe that brings us to the conclusion. Hey, thank you very much, James. We appreciate uh, the time you put into the presentation today. We did have a couple of questions that came in. Uh, if you can stick around for a few minutes here. <clears throat> Uh, the first question was, can you explain why there is a mirror at the initiation site? Uh, he indicated the photo diagram gave some context to Hackles, uh, but he was curious about, uh, about some more information on the mirror. It, it has to do with the, uh, the crack wave. This is very much like uh, having a pool of water that uh, has no disturbance and you drop a pebble in it. And as that pebble, there's a wave that moves out. But the wave continues to accelerate. So at the slow speed, the wave produces a very smooth area. Um, can't really get into the specifics of why that's smoother, but as the crack propagates further, sometimes the crack wants to go in different directions and that produces these uh, hackle uh, marks. Uh, so it, it all has to do with you know, how smooth uh, that surface uh, in the mirror area was as a result of the crack moving in a uniform front at a relatively low velocity. Interesting. Thanks, James. Um, another question came in. Are, are there any emerging trends, I guess, in your field of science that, that can assist uh, in, in litigation currently? Uh, <laughs> well, within specifics of uh, tempered glass and being able to follow the ASTM and NIST standards to identify uh, specific failure origin sites, that uh, certainly helps in the litigation. That's a, it's a big part of it. Uh, we see some uh, new trends in architectural glass, thicker glass that has been curved. It's absolutely beautiful. It's showing up in a lot of different uh, installations and uh, we have yet to uh, formulate, uh, I think, the correct standards that need to be in place, um, you know, for understanding uh, uh, potential cracks and, and uh, failure of, of those architectural glasses. Okay, very good. Uh, it looks like it looks like we've we've covered all the questions that came in for now. Uh, if 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 uh, you think of any questions uh, after the fact, please don't hesitate to reach out to us directly. Uh, James, thanks again uh, for taking the time to, to join us today, and thank you for everybody uh, who took time out of their busy schedules to join us. Uh, we hope you can you can come back uh, again here in the, in the next few weeks, uh, and thanks a lot. Bye-bye.